inspire mainstream angel investors towards impact investing, to draw and attract them towards impact investments. I'm going to pose that question to Nandini Mansinka, who's a member of the Mumbai Angels Network. Nandini, glad that you could spare the time. Thank you. Uh, you're an angel investor. When you're evaluating investments, what are you looking at? Three things, actually. The first one, and I think it remains the same whether you are just starting out or you're looking for your Series A, Series B, whatever level funding, is the team. So that's, that's the first thing that I would look at. The second is the business. It has to be a sound business. The third is, can I make any contribution to the business that I invest in? So you know, just to, just to give you a sense of why would somebody be an angel and not be a, say, a limited partner with the fund, is, is because you want to take the individual decisions. You want to say, what can I do for the company? Do I understand this? Right. You know? so, so these are the three things that one would look at whenever you're making an investment. You've made over 10 investments in ten the last, uh, what, two, or two, years. two years? Two years. Have any of them been in the space that we call impact investing? No. OK. So what will it take hmm. to steer you to looking at proposals coming from this space? Hmm. Is it because uh, currently your priority is returns? Hmm. Would you be open to looking at social returns as well? Um, do you feel that there are perhaps the, the level of risk is um, unpalatable? See, I, I would like to look at it slightly differently, right? I think in India, where we are today, I would look at impact as any business that changes lives, right? So if I am in a technology business, for example, and it gives jobs to 100 people, that's impact. If I'm being able to get people to connect with each other, which they earlier couldn't because of a certain platform or a certain technology, that's impact. You know, so I'm not looking at impact specifically as saying, oh, it's bottom of the pyramid, or it's rural, or it's a uh, low income group. I'm saying, where is impact based on, if you're doing something, is it going to change lives, mm -hmm. right? So the minute you look at that, I think we, you know, we move away from this discussion on the, na in my view, what is it? It what, is what, narrow, you know, trying to straight jacket, try straight jacket saying, something which does not necessarily need to be straight jacketed. But the assumption is that hmm. bottom of the pyramid, base of the pyramid, deserve a greater focus and hence working hmm. backwards from there. I'm just curious, out of the investments that you've made, have any of them also changed uh, the lives of people at the bottom of the pyramid, base of the pyramid? This is a good time to pause and reflect. Uh, because yeah. then it, I could argue that you actually straddle both worlds. Uh, have they created jobs? Yes. At the bottom of the pyramid? Some of them, yes. Okay. So I wouldn't want to give exact, yeah. you know, wherever. But yes, some okay. of them have. But did I invest in them because of that? No. Okay. I would always invest in something where I know that, you know, the promoter is focused on building a business. You know, so... You know, this whole uh, discussion around uh, impact and, you know, if, if we want to say impact and non-impact, those things, is that I think today the promoters are getting slightly confused on are they looking for investments or are they looking for grants? Yes. You know, so I think whoever is walking over there and saying I'm looking for an investor, they have to understand that investors are there to look for returns. Yes. Now. Is each investor looking for a 10x investment on each of what they're putting money in? No. So if you ask me and say, are you always looking for a company that will you know, make 100 crores? I'm not looking at it. Because I understand that's not the reality. But I'm not saying that the, inv the promoter should walk in and say, you should invest in this, but I don't know if there is money in it. Right. You know? So, so I, because so what will happen is that even if I get convinced as an as an individual it'll be misleading it'll be misleading and it is not you're not going to be able to grow because trying to convince 50 people or you know sizable funds that you're what you're calling a business might not actually make money is not a, a lasting proposition i mean you know i could argue that you can have both financial returns and social returns uh, facilitated by innovation mm. And uh, you know that is really the 
sort of umbrella path forward. But whether you're an impact investor or not, just don your usual hat, which is that of an angel investor. What are the key gaps in the framework, the enabling environment, the ecosystem uh, that you uh, experience as an investor? So it's the investor perspective that I'm hmm. seeking. Hmm. And the gaps that you identify actually apply to those in the impact or non-impact space. Absolutely. I, that so I what, totally are the, agree. what are the gaps that you see? See, I think uh, in India today, it's a very new ecosystem. You know, it's, it's a fledgling uh, system. So what is happening is that when entrepreneurs are walking in and when they're talking to investors, most of the time they're not ready. I think, you know, their ideas are not crystallized. So I think a lot more thought needs to go before you start looking for external money. So my view is that anybody who starts out trying to say that I'm going to build a business, first do this with your own money. When own money, I mean own friends, family, acquaintances, people who believe in you. And right. you know, not so much. So they, they are not saying that we know this business will succeed. But they are saying, we want you to succeed, so here is the money. Mm. You know, take that money, build the base. You know, build a proof of concept. Because that proof of concept building, I think a lot of people today in India are not doing. Because you know, there Would is- Would you say a majority are not doing it? Yes. I think 70% I think people that I meet are not clear on why, why is it that they want to do the business? What is the business model? How much money do they need? You know, so what is happening is that I think, you know, because all of us are reading that there are so many VC funds, there are so many angel investors, there is a perception that money is available. Hmm. Money is available, but it won't come till the person across the table gets convinced. So you have to be ready, you know, in terms of what is it that you're trying to talk. And so, and I think the other part of it is try and convince a customer first before trying to convince an investor. There's nothing like customer testimonials to validate a business. Absolutely. Um, if there are customers and inadequate numbers, it shall succeed, I suppose. Absolutely. Um, you know, you haven't referred to anything in the sort of institutional framework, and here I'm referring to government policy, legislation, etc. Uh, so should I presume that on that front, uh, it's as good as it can be? No, I think <laughs> India... <laughs> I decided to soft pedal a hard question. I think India is one of the most difficult places for, you know, and so, so you know, I also work with companies as a seed investor, where I have put money where it's, it's just an idea. Somebody's just walked in with a piece of paper and said, this is, my this is what it is. And I said, okay, I'm going to work with you, not as an investor only, but somebody who can be a part of the management team or part of the, you know, the core team. Hmm. And one of the key things you realize over there, so difficult for you to navigate. You know, if you, just, just the concept of saying, okay, I want to get an office, I want to get, my company opened, I want to open a bank account. Incorporation it, it, is it's, it's, often exhausting as well. It, it's very exhausting. And after that, also just, just the whole, uh, you know, the whole machinery, I think it, it needs a lot of work, a lot of work. It's, well, that will, I think, be perpetually on the wish list <laughs> of investors and entrepreneurs. Nandini, thanks very much for your time. A pleasure talking to you. Thank you.